Hello folks, Mike Haley 7 here, and this is uh, September the 10th, 2019, quite a different view for you from the usual on my way to work in North Carolina. I am on my way to Sault Ste. Marie, or as the French would pronounce it, Sault Ste. Marie. Anyway, um, this is uh, route, what, 75? Yep. That's Moose That'd up there. Say hello, Moose. Hello, Moose. There you go. The temperature is a balmy 60-something, and uh, although it looks rather foreboding today, it is actually a really beautiful day. Yep. Rained like a sucker last night, though, boy. Yeah, yeah, it was coming Under down. Thunderstorms and lightning and stuff. Woke up this morning, little drizzles, but uh, but the rain should pour us and keep us the day today, so. Yep. Hoping. Should be good. We're going to go over to the Canadian side, so I'll record a little bit more from that side as well. I just wanted to show you the road to Sault Ste. Marie from uh, St. Ignis. This is on the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The hotel we stayed at was very nice. It's called America's Best Value Inn. And it was uh, $69 a night for two queen beds at this time of year, you know, September after Labor Day. You can't beat that, man. And uh, although the breakfast was uh, not very well uh, created, uh, it's breakfast, you know. So, can't really complain. And we're out on the road now. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. This is not half bad. Oh, i got to catch up to Moose up here. What am I doing? Hey, you're way back there. There we go. I'm back. Yeah, my here. I will tell you a difference. Ooh, you know what I'll do? I want to make this. I think it was Glenn asked me to do a, a little review of the Honda Goldwing at this point. Oops, oops, oops. You're fine. I just slowed down for you. Okay, thank you. That way you didn't get caught speeding down through here. Yeah. Oh, is it? What's the speed limit now? Uh, it's still 75, but you're falling back again. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm, well, I'm maybe running into a little bit of rain. So, um, here's a review of the Honda Goldwing as I ride to Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, likes. I'll start with the likes and then go to the dislikes. No, I'll start out with the dislikes and go to the likes. How about that? I dislike the hardness of this seat, but that's uh, something that everybody complains about that I know of. And... Pretty much any seat that's not an air bladder seat, like the road Zeppelin seat that I used to have. Yeah, see the thumbs up he's given. Uh, nothing is going to compare to that. However, the mitigating factor for this seat is two things. One is, it's heated. So on a day like today, when it's in the 60s, and I have it on full blast, I don't know if you can see that down there, but I've got it on five. Uh, my ass is happy. Very, very happy. Actually, a little bit toasted. Let me turn it down one been on the road for what about 20 minutes uh, something like that so that's awesome I got heated grips and a heated seat and so that really helps but the seat is too hard the backrest I bought is the Honda backrest which uh, you know it's small it's it's strong it's adequate and I can adjust it forward I just haven't got off my lazy ass to do it uh, I hear the utopia backrest is the shiznit but uh, I already spent all the money on this thing so I'm gonna give it about a year and then maybe I'll switch. Oh, by that time you'll be trading it on the bike anyways. Yeah, I'll be trading it on another Honda. So, Or maybe that Triumph Rocket 3. I think I can see in two years trading up to another Goldwing. Oh, man. If they, well, they might come out with something more super-duper awesome. That's what I mean. Yep. So, um, the, another dislike. Let me think. Is there any other dislike that I have for this bike? Oh, the storage. Storage, storage space. Yeah. It doesn't have as much storage space as my Gemma did. However, the stuff that I would carry on a normal day all fits in the bike. So when I bought this new bike, I put all the stuff that was a Gemma into this bike and it fit fine. On a trip, uh, when I was with Gemma, I had to put a, I put a, one of those wheelie bags, carry-on bags on the back seat. I don't know if you remember that from a couple years ago. This time, uh, I still have to put a bag on there. I have a 30-liter roll-up bag from Krieger. And that fits on there just fine. Not a whole lot of tie-down space. 
the way they make the bike with the flowing lines or whatever, it's there is a passenger grab rail for the passenger seat, and you can get the the bungee cords around it. So that was fine once I figured that out. I hear they say the passenger grabs are a little too low on that bike for passengers. Yeah, yeah, they're not really. This bike is um, it's got some problem. If you're on a long tour with a person, this is just not the bike for you. Unless you have a trailer. If you're pulling a trailer, then yeah, put all the stuff in the back, change the grab rail, get a little bit of a better seat. Pretty much every motorcycle in the world, you have to get a different seat. Yeah. I don't think any of them make it, like, perfect out of the box. I've never had one I didn't have to change the seat on. Yeah. Uh, anything Unless else? Unless you're riding really short distance. Yeah. They might never notice it. If you're bar hopping, which is dumb. So let's see. Anything else I don't like? Oh, the parking brake. I hate the parking brake on this thing because there's really a, no real warning when you forget it. Except this little red light comes on and if you don't look down often, like like happened to me, all of a sudden Jay's like, I smell burning. And that's when I realized the parking brake had been on for the last 20 minutes. I've done that several times and now the parking brake doesn't work at all. Now you might be asking yourself, why would they put a parking brake on a motorcycle? Well, that's because when you're on a hill, uh, because this is an automatic transmission, the moment you put the kickstand down, the bike goes into neutral. There's no way to turn off the bike in first gear that I know of. So that's why they put a parking brake in there. So last night when I parked at the hotel, it's on an angle, and it was starting to slide real easy. So I ended up curving it like this. So that, you know, it was like, and it was fine. But uh, I heard Jay said something like they're going to make it so that the bike won't won't go until you turn off that brake. Which I think is a very smart thing. What's huh? an aftermarket add-on? Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, I know how to listen to it and do it, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to have to have that brake replaced now. I bet they're going to have a lot of feedback on that. Oh, yeah. The new automatic transmission. The people are probably going to have that problem. They'll probably have to look at it. Yep. So those three things, the seat, the, the cargo capacity, and the parking brake, uh, all things I don't like. Another thing I don't like, the handlebars, just the way I have to reach for them from my seating position, I have to lean a little bit forward, and over time it causes shoulder pain. But even when I had my chubby bagger low bars, I still had shoulder pain. I think it's, the, it's not the, the handlebars necessarily. It's the helmet, the weight of the helmet. I don't know, but uh, it's not—it's not a deal breaker by any means. I mean, if I could raise them up and back a little bit, I think I'd be happy. But that's a very minor complaint. Uh, another complaint. I thought, thought of another one. The GPS on this thing, although it's accurate and it's—you can see it well. Putting in the data is clunky. You have to turn a knob, push the button, turn, turn, push, push, go through these different menus. And it's time consuming and I know that the technology is is uh, way better on phones and I don't know how they can ever improve that on the bike itself although Honda does have that workaround where you could put Apple CarPlay which I've, I've done the problem is if I Apple CarPlay then I can't talk to Jay because my Cena is too busy talking to the bike so that sucks so yeah, the, the navigation on this is clunky to use, although it, it doesn't lead you astray. Actually, on the way back from West Virginia last time, it rerouted me. It said there's traffic ahead. The bike did. It said, do you want to go a different way? I'm like, well, yeah. And it took me down this awesome, awesome road. So there's that. Anything else I don't like? Uh, charging stuff. It's got one charging port or one, one place to plug in. In, in this bike, it's on the, it's in this little, I don't know if you can see it down here, my glove box. So, um, I know that the airbag model has one also in the trunk. Or, or maybe the only one that's in the trunk, because the airbag is here. So, uh, that kind of sucks. But you can get aftermarket stuff if you want to. Another complaint. The plastic. You have to take off a shit ton of plastic to get to do anything on the bike and that's time consuming so that kind of sucks i don't like the fact of how easy it's scratched up by your gas tank yeah it scratched the sh i scratched the shit out of it by my gas flap because you know i have 
uh, the, the pants that I usually wear, they're highly armored and they got that special, I don't know what they call it, but there's a special thing, abras it's very abrasive. So, but I don't really care so much because the plastic on this is pretty cheap anyway. That's another difference, another kind of complaint, I guess. I do like the, the fiberglass that Harley uses. It, it allows for a better quality of paint a better fit and finish you can't beat Harley for fit and finish uh, this although it's it's adequate it's fine it just looks a little bit cheap but uh, you know I don't I don't buy this bike to stare at it I've, I buy this bike to ride it and when when I'm riding it I'm very happy well, I, guess there I mean the seat comes over the gas tank takes the clear off no there you, you go know, you remove the tank you remove the seat and I'll, the bottom of the tank looks like shit yeah. So they all have their little areas where they screw yeah. up. I mean, Harley Davidson's GPS, although it works, is goddamn horrible technology. Yeah. Yeah. So hard to use. You got to use the ride planner to even get anything out easily. But then you got to plan ahead. Only nice thing is this touch screen, you know. But yeah. So uh, I guess that's uh, pretty much it. The mileage is great. I get like 42.3 miles per gallon at between 60 and 80 miles an hour. Right now I'm doing uh, 78 miles an hour, and I, my um, RPMs are right around 25, 2600. So that's pretty sweet. Um, the engine doesn't feel like it's working really hard. When I was on Gemma, that bike would get up and go pretty good, but it felt like it was really working to do it. You know, because it's too soon. Oh, that's right. We're going to get gas. I'm going to push this BP and just take me to that as close as one. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Now, of course, you're going to get highway pegs on a motorcycle. So I got highway pegs. That's aftermarket. I bet you ain't talking to me today. Oh, wow. She's mad at you from yelling at her last night. Well, oh, fuck her. Likes. What do I like about the Honda Goldwing? Oh, man. It's not a Harley. <laughs> 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 it's um the the smoothness of it the handling of it it's a very flickable machine if you like to get low in the twisties and really have a uh, great cornering ability this bike is way better than any ultra could ever be um the other thing is the braking on this is very confidence inspiring yeah the brakes i think work great i mean the ultra works good yeah, that, but after right now, I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, the get up and go, I'm in tour mode, and uh, this thing's got all kinds of uh, spunk, pep. If I downshift, one, two, and he's accelerating, and I'm oh. catching up with him. Oh, my God, I just did a jump. So I, I just, I, I can paddle shift down when I need to downshift for passing. I'm in econ mode actually too, that's another thing, to save gas. So it's got the ride modes, I love that. I can paddle shift whenever I want to gear down, gear up. The bike automatically does all that stuff for you. Um, it's just if you want to, to do it faster for some reason, you can. But um, generally speaking, I never really have to use the paddle shifters. I think it's one reason it stops so fast because it's using that automatic transmission and slowing itself down yeah, it while used, you're going through the brakes. It uses its own engine braking, which is awesome. Uh, the the double wishbone suspension is fantastic. You don't feel the, the bumps nearly as much. It just kind of flows and floats. Uh, yeah, this bike is awesome. I got that windshield I can raise and lower at will electronically. I can adjust my headlights up and down, although you got to turn a knob for that. But I could never adjust my headlight up and down on the Harley that very easily that I know of. I guess there's a screw that you can do to do, I don't know. Yeah, but that ain't very easy. No, especially right. if, you, if you put an extra ring on it, too. That's not something you're going to do on the road. Just, hey, I think I'll adjust my headlight up a little bit for this one road. Yeah. My Triumph had the easiest system. It was all electronic. Yeah, that's on the previous generation Goldwing, it was like that. I wish that they did that. they went backwards. Yeah. I don't know. I like that Goldwing. I'm pondering getting one myself next time. I get a bike because I'm not going to pay Harley another three thousand more than what this bike costs for the same bike, basically. Yeah, unless Harley comes out with something super awesome. They'd have to do something so spectacular that 
Yeah. And you know Harley, I mean, they're already charging extra for the traction control and crap. Yeah. yeah. They can't give that shit to you for free. And their excuse always is, well, you know, a lot of the old timers don't want it on their bikes, blah, blah, blah. Well, how many old timers are still buying their bikes? Yeah, I know. This is a slick parking lot. Holy hell. Mm. There's no grip here at all. And I'll end on this note, folks. This bike takes 87 octane. Isn't that awesome? Anyway, yeah. So overall, do I regret buying this bike? Not one little teeny weeny bit. So if you're thinking about getting one, I say take it out for a test ride. Get the automatic. Don't worry about the shifting thing because you can always paddle shift if you want to. And that's my take. Next time you see me, I will be in Canada. I passing over the bridge. Yeah.